Are we good? Things are... Oh, good. <laughs> Checking the autofocus. Hey guys, welcome back to the studio vlog. It has been a while. I have been busy. I mean, not that I'm ever not busy, but <laughs> um, I've been working on a project in the background and I can't wait to tell you more about it, but I think I need to get it a little closer to complete before I feel comfortable sharing it because in this world of social media and everything is so fast, I think the second I share something is like, it's kind of expected that it'll be available right now. Anyway, I digress. So I have some other weaving stuff I really want to work on and I almost started it today and then I was like, okay, this weaving back here has been on the loom for, I don't know, like at least probably like four months. Um, and it's not because it's like taking me that long to weave it. It's just simply I have like not been really trying. It was one of those projects that I was really excited about when I started. And then it was right around the time when I was starting to put the fiber packs together. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I wish I was working with colors now, which is so weird for me because I, you guys know, like I love my neutrals, but I think what I'm discovering is that I actually don't, it's not that I dislike color, I think I'm just really picky about color. So anyway, I just really want to get this done, and it's not that I don't like it. I actually think it's super beautiful, but I just feel other projects like calling my name and anyone else who's an artist, creative, entrepreneur, you probably are like me where you have a million ideas running through your brain at all times, and so it can be really hard to complete projects sometimes because you just want to do all the things. So I'm trying to be good. And I say that now, but later tonight, I'm probably going to start another weaving project that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> Let's be just really honest here. Um, anyway, I'm going to work on this. I already stained the dowel, so I got that step done. I have woven a little bit on it today, but I just thought you guys might want to hang out with me while I work on this. And um, yeah. So here we go. Also, can we just talk about the fact that I'm in like straight up all black today minus this headband. And every time I put on black and I work with wool or I live in this house with pets, I'm like, why do I do this to myself? Because I'm just like immediately covered and yet here we are, I'm still wearing black. Anyway, time to weave. This video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen Shop where you can find weaving kits, tools, materials, and supplies. Link in the description box below. Okay, I'm just jumping in here because, guys, I'm totally obsessed with the channel The Endless Adventure. They are like travel vloggers and um, COVID happened. So now they're like, they're renovating an old RV, like a actual little motorhome. And I'm obsessed and it like, I want, and it's funny cause they, like, they haven't even done all the like cool pretty things yet, but like I want to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to, but man, I'm addicted. So anyway, if you need some new positive, happy, fun content to watch, I highly recommend The Endless Adventure. They're really, really great. The trouble when you um, are working on a piece for so long and you put everything away is sometimes you forget what materials you were using. <laughs> so right now I'm like trying to make sure I am grabbing the same yarn. I think I found it. We're good. <laughs> So I'm trying to pick a color for the dowel. Um, I stained this one, this nice dark color, and I just feel like maybe it's a little bit too dark. Um, 
I don't know, it looks, I think it looks better on camera than it does in person, ironically. But it almost feels a little bit heavy for the piece. So anyway, I stained a few other ones just to see what other colors would look against it. Um, so I've got like this one, which I think is actually, might be too close to the same color as that yarn. And maybe a little bit on the cool side. Then I had this one, and the dowel seems to take the color kind of strangely. Let's see if I can get a focus here. So it seems like it, it like it takes it really unevenly. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, and then this, I'll show you this one first. So then there's this one. Excuse the uneven staining. These are just like little samples, and I think that's getting a little closer. Like I kind of like that little bit of contrast with the piece but I feel like this is not the right kind of contrast and then I did this one and I think that is what I'm leaning towards because what I like about it is that it's very well if you can see it compared to those other ones it's kind of warm still which I'm liking because this piece is mostly filled with warm colors but it is a bit lighter and it's not super yellowy like this one is definitely more much more warm whereas this one almost feels like like a warm but worn <laughs> color so I think that's what I'm gonna go with I have more dowels so I'm just gonna stain one up and then I can compare it um, not a huge deal I can use this on another piece but yeah when I just laid it there and looked at it it just like it doesn't feel quite right and I think it just I don't know it feels too cold so I think I'm just gonna warm up the piece like this like that's more the vibe I'm going for is that cozy warm whereas I feel like this is very um what's the word I'm looking for I think it's just heavy I don't want it to be so heavy at the top um because then it's gonna feel kind of top heavy the last time I used a big dowel like this on a really big piece was when I did my sister's piece for her stairwell and it was a humongous piece. It had super, super long tassels and there was a lot of color, a lot of dark. So I felt like it actually kind of anchored the piece and it also had black warp strings. So it really just like worked well together. But on this piece, I'm going for more of that warm, cozy vibe. And I think this is just simply, um, it's taking away from that rather than adding to it. I think for me, you know what I think it is? I think for me this is giving it too much of a too much of a rustic vibe, which is not really my thing. Whereas I think this um keeps it a little bit more modern um and more of just that cozy warm. I hope that makes sense. These are <laughs> and the reason I'm telling you all of this is that I know a lot of you ask about the design process and that kind of thing. So these are the kinds of things I'm thinking of. So just because I stained that dowel, if I don't think it looks good, I'm not gonna use it because like I said, this piece has been on here for so long, I want it to be the best it can be. And um, not that I'm expecting any sort of perfection, but you can see how much um, the feeling of it, and I'll zoom out a little bit more, the feeling of the piece really changes depending on what dowel you have on here. So you see how that's kind of really heavy and I just don't really feel like it suits the piece. And then we go to something like this where it's almost like if you wanted the dowel to blend in then that might be the right choice but to me this still is a little bit on the rustic side. And then we go to this and it just looks a little off like it's like close to the yarn color but not quite. This one's definitely getting closer and again it's stained really unevenly. This one I would probably still use on this but it's a little bit too on the yellow side. And then finally this one, ignore the end because it has some other colors of stain on it. This one to me is kind of that perfect balance of warmth, keeping a little bit more modern I think with the lighter color and the more neutral tone. And um, But it still provides just a little bit of warmth to the piece. So anyway, I'm gonna stain a dowel, hold it up there again. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a better match.
Okay, you guys, I'm back. It's been a couple days. Um, yeah, life happened. So I stained a new dowel and I wanna show you what it looks like before I go finishing this weaving. But check it out. Okay, I'm gonna do a little comparison just so I can once again talk you through my thoughts. So these dowels are obviously very different in color, very different. Now, when I hold this one up here, to me, because of the whole neutral vibe of this, to me this dowel gives it more of a rustic look, which is really not my thing. Obviously if someone wanted that or likes that, that's absolutely fine, but I just kind of wanted to show you how the whole vibe can change excuse my phone, just by this dowel alone. So now if I hold up this one, I mean, some might consider this still fairly rustic, but to me, this lighter, very neutral color of wood um, just brings it that little bit more modern again. Um, and because this is all like kinds of beiges and browns, it can very easily get that rustic look, which is just not my personal thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, obviously. Um, it's just not kind of the idea I was going for. So anyway, I really love this color. It does bring a little bit of warmth because these um, browns are definitely a little bit more gray. Um, and anyway, so I just, and honestly, when I started looking at it, I realized that the color of my loom was really um, kind of what I wanted. I feel like this color is just, right now anyway, it just feels a little bit more fresh, a little bit more modern. So I went with the closest stain color I had and I'm really, really liking that. So anyway, I'm gonna tuck in all these ends and then um, you're actually going to see this after I film the YouTube tutorial where I'm gonna show you how to take off a giant weaving. Um, I know a lot of people are very intimidated by that. So anyway, so you will have already seen that, but I thought it would be fun for you to kind of see my process and my thinking behind all the things. Anyway, let's go. is finished um, and here's the thing about the back I see a lot of people like to ask the question like how much does the back sorry I'm just trying to get it to focus on me how much does the back really matter on your piece and the way I compare it is kind of like let's think about how you um, treat people say your customers like how do you treat your customers outside of the public eye right so like when you're in your dms when you're answering questions on your etsy shop messages whatever it is and it's like obviously you're going to remain professional even though that's not in the public eye so i kind of compare it to that that the back of your weaving is just as important and shows your expertise and your professionalism as the front that's my opinion as a business owner and as someone who wants to make and sell their work. Now, if you're making this for yourself or you're really just making it for your family, like that might be a different scenario and maybe you don't need to worry about the back so much, but I really think that um, anytime you're selling a product, I think as was pounded in my mind when I was in art school, like they would constantly tell us like the back is just as important as the front. If so, because the thing is, if you've ever done um, a market or something like that, where people are like able to pick up your work and look at it, they will always look at the back. You would be shocked. Every time someone picks up a piece, they look at the front, they turn it around, they look at the back. So if the back looks like it's in shambles and is all crazy, like 
they might immediately perceive your business as less professional. And that's where it comes in like theoretically and on a really practical level, no, it doesn't really matter what the back looks like. But as a business, as a professional, it really, really matters because if that's gonna be the make or break point for selling, you're gonna wish you took the time to actually finish it properly. And again, I know a lot of people are just like, but I hate doing the back, blah, 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 but come on now. I get great satisfaction out of how clean this looks. And you have to admit that makes it look so much more professionally done just because I made sure the back was just as tidy as the front. Like obviously, you know, there's little ends here sticking out and it's obvious that this is the back when you really start looking at it. But, um, again, yes, in my, in my professional opinion, it very much matters what the back looks like. And yeah, that's all I got to say. So I think I kind of, uh, jumped the gun when I started this piece and I didn't do any kind of twining on the bottom or anything like that. So I think I'm going to go in and do some quick twining to make sure that everything stays in place. Cause especially on these curvy ones, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult because, um, typically when I take, and you'll learn this in the tutorial. So if you want the full tutorial on how to take this off the loom, go see that. <clears throat> My voice is very croaky today. So don't mind me. It's just cause, <clears throat> okay. I just want to address something real quick. I've had people tell me that I sound sad or like weepy when my voice sounds like this, but in reality, it's just that I haven't talked enough today. So my voice isn't warmed up and that's kind of like the whole working from home by yourself thing that happens. <laughs> Sometimes you can go through most of the day without talking out loud. So that's all that is. My voice is just not warmed up anyway. So, Typically when I take big pieces off the loom, I measure my strings as I'm tying them so that I can be sure that everything is going to be square and everything's gonna hang correctly. But when you have a curved bottom like I do here, you obviously, there's no measuring I can do because every part is going to be different. So that's why I'm gonna go in here and do a quick twining stitch so that I can make sure that these strings are at least closely staying where they should, but when I do the top, I will be measuring. So anyway, I'm gonna go do that now. All right, you guys, so I'm in the middle of filming the tutorial for how to get a big weaving off the loom and I've got it on the wall now, so it's like all done, and I'm just gonna steam and cut the fringe, so we'll put a little time lapse in here for that. Okay, vlog, so it's done. Um, I'm really excited about not cutting super straight fringe. I have found that it's like getting more and more annoying, I guess, cutting that super straight fringe. It's really time consuming. It takes quite a long time to get it all straight. And yarn is quite bouncy, so it is constantly kind of moving and adjusting. So I really wanted to try something different on this one just to see, and I really like it. It's, it's still that general shape of the weaving and if you watch this week's um, tutorial, you'll see me talk a little more, bit more about it, but I'm really liking that just kind of purposefully uneven look. So it's not just letting it go wherever it wants to, but it is also not trying to make it perfect either. So it's kind of somewhere in between. Anyway, I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I'm so happy it's done because literally, like I was telling you earlier, it has been on my loom for months and it was kind of like mentally becoming this like mental burden for me. So I'm really glad it's done now and I'm also just really glad I love it. Um, because if you've been following along for a while, it has been through a few iterations. Like I did all the fringe and then decided I wanted to change it and I changed the whole 
concept basically from where I started. So anyway, I'm very happy with the way it turned out and I've suddenly lost, <laughs> oh, I suddenly lost where this whole vlog was going. But basically, yeah. You know, and basically the whole reason this weaving was on the loom for so long was just because I started creating it and then I started getting busy with the Etsy shop and the good kind of busyness started happening and so I just kind of let it be. But now that this is off the loom, I feel like I can move to other projects and I'm really excited about that and really focus on them because I don't love leaving things undone, especially when it comes to stuff like this because that means I could not use that loom until I completed the weaving. So now this is off, we're done, it's good, and I'm very happy. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope you guys try some big weavings too because again, if you haven't yet, go watch the tutorial on how to take a big weaving off the loom because it's really not that hard. It's basically the same as taking a small weaving off a smaller loom. So anyway, I can't wait to see your guys' large pieces. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.